the intro to the series that I'm working on, that you're watching right now, allow me to explain. It's basically just me defending Gamergate as a whole. As you know, I am a gamer, and I support Gamergate. I wouldn't be a gamer if I wasn't a supporter of Gamergate. And you know, today... I really didn't expect to do this. I really didn't expect to make a video response, at least not this fucking soon, to the same person again. Sake Roar, aka the woman who's obsessed with her own freaking vagina. <sighs> I will not respond to everything that she will say because I really have other projects to work on, but the things that she says in this particular video really just pisses me the fuck off. So with that being said, let's begin. Welcome to my vagina. We've been hearing the name Anita Sarkeesian a lot. On March 7, 2013, the host of the web series Feminist Frequency published her piece Tropes vs. Women in Video Games, which received enormous backlash full of anger and sexism that further thrust her into the spotlight. Nothing says misogyny as, like, hating a woman for being completely dishonest and just being a straight-up liar. But no, instead, it, the only reason that we're attacking Anita Sarkeesian is because she has a vagina. And there is no other reason other than that. The most serious threat came from an email that claimed that if Miss Sarkeesian did not cancel, that the author would perpetuate a Montreal massacre-styled shooting. The lunatic was referencing the massacre that happened in 1989, when a gunman walked into the École Polytechnique in Montreal. Basically, in a nutshell, he decided to go on a fucking killing spree because feminists have quote-unquote ruined his life. He went to a classroom, ordered all the boys to leave, all the, all the girls to stay in, and decided to unleash his weapon against them because I guess little girls are going to end up into feminazis. And while this is a tragic thing, what Anita has received is no different from every other death threat that she has received along the fucking lines. Death threats are only meant to scare people away. Most of the time these people do not keep their so-called promises. Perhaps, maybe there's a slight chance that Gamergate could have started out with well-meaning people and well-meaning gamers that cared about ethics and transparency sound very convinced. It's almost as if you automatically assume that Gamergate is actually responsible for this. I could be wrong, but from the sound of your voice, it's pretty hard to tell if you're actually being honest. Concerned that gamers and journalists are way too intertwined. That journalists are getting early and free access to games and then hyping them up when essentially they're crap. This isn't new, but it does suck, and I understand wanting to raise flags about that issue. This all started with Zoe Quinn's Depression Quest, which received good reviews despite its lack of machine guns. I played it, and it certainly does seem like more of a narrative art form to explore your feelings versus shooting down mutants with an AK-47. When this unusual game received favorable reviews, Quinn was immediately decried as a figure of corruption who slept her way to positive reviews. These claims were proven false, but the damage to her reputation was already done. Um, well, I can't really say much about, about this particular part because I don't really know much about Zoe Quinn's affairs. However, there is some evidence suggesting that she has. So please don't just 
throw it away immediately. And it's not just because uh, Zoe Quinn has, in fact, slept with a bunch of people, but also there's been some corruption with gaming journalists who blindly, of course, support Zoe Quinn. I think the Investigamer Gamer has all the info that you need. Regardless of what you may have heard, the Gamergate movement is primarily concerned with the ethical corruption of gaming journalism. We will be taking a look at a number of events that supposedly violate the ethics of journalism. And before we do that, we have to understand what defines ethical journalism, at least on a broad level. Taken straight from Wikipedia. While various existing codes have some differences, most share common elements including the principles of truthfulness, accuracy, objectivity, impartiality, fairness, and public accountability. Out of these principles, I want you to keep in mind three in particular. Objectivity, impartiality, and public accountability. These are the primary principles being questioned with regards to gaming journalism, and here's why. Firstly, we have the girl who started it all, Zoe Quinn. It has been confirmed that Quinn had an ongoing sexual relationship with Nathan Grayson, a writer at Kotaku and Rock Paper Shotgun. Grayson has written articles about Zoe Quinn twice. The first article is a list of 50 games added to Steam through the Steam Greenlight service. Out of that list of 50, Nathan used Quinn's game for the article image and named it as the first standout title. The second article is about an indie game reality TV show called Game Jam and how the show was canceled allegedly because the CEO tried to stir up drama. Regardless of who's right or wrong on that debacle, the article references Zoe Quinn directly by name multiple times and seems to be tailored towards her side of the argument. It's uh, also interesting to note that following the collapse of this Game Jam event, Zoe began heading a project called Rebel Jam, which she is accepting donations to her private PayPal. Huh. Weird. So in summary, Zoe Quinn had a sexual relationship with Nathan Grayson who wrote two, count them two, favorable articles about her which she probably benefited from. That is unethical, unequivocally so. It violates impartiality because you're getting physically and emotionally involved with the people you're writing about. <sighs> Next we have another Kotaku writer by the name of Patricia Hernandez. She's written at least two articles benefiting people she knows personally or even had a previous private relationship with. The first article about a game developed by Christine Love and the second developed by Anna Anthropy. Wow, two more instances of completely ignoring impartiality. Does Kotaku have any standards? <laughs> Apparently not, because they also allow their journalists to contribute money to the people they've covered. Yeah, that's completely impartial. I mean, look at Kirk Hamilton, another Kotaku dude, donating money to good old Zoe Quinn. But it's not just Kotaku. Ben Kuchera with Polygon is in there too. <sighs> All right. So gamers started seeing a recurring problem and decided to raise legitimate questions about games journalism. Some were concerned. Some were admittedly angry. But I don't think anyone quite expected what happened next. Gaming journalists responded in droves by insulting us? What? Yeah, almost every major news site was putting out articles like A Guide to Ending Gamers, The End of Gamers, Gamers Don't Have to Be Your Audience, The Death of an Identity. <sighs> Ignoring the very obviously opinionated headlines, we begin to notice a prominent trend. Doesn't this onslaught of articles seem like I don't know, a coordinated effort? I mean, if that were true, that would blatantly defy objectivity and accountability. They're spinning a story in a direction favorable to them, and not one of them is even attempting to hold journalists accountable for past actions. Well, hold on to your butts, because guess what? It likely was a coordinated effort. 
Yeah, just the other day it was revealed that journalists and editors from a plethora of different tech and gaming sites communicate privately in a Google group called Game Journo Pros. And I'm sure some of you might be thinking, hey, maybe they're just getting together to swap stories or talk about the latest game. Maybe they're just networking. That's perfectly acceptable within most jobs, right? I mean, maybe they're not doing anything unethical in terms of journalism. Well, with this information comes a leaked email thread talking specifically about the Zoe Quinn debacle, discussing how best to help her. I've been able to confirm writers from Wired, Eurogamer, GameSpot, Joystick, Gotaku, TechRadar, Ars Technica, Game Informer, and Polygon as members of the mailing list. Full of death threats, rape tweets, and hateful diatribes on YouTube. But who doesn't like being called a misandric cunt in all caps? Burn already! Burn already! In an article, Vice called GamerGator's poopy pants. I quite prefer that. Because every feminist now is some suspicious villain trying to steal your fun away. Yeah, you're definitely not trying to take away our fun by making us feel guilty for playing these horrible sexist video games. And that we should fulfill your fucking egos by creating video games that fulfills your needs. The extreme minority who apparently needs their fucking egos to be fucking scratched. Give me a break. It seems that any sane gamers stepped away from this bullying crap like they were stepping away from a hot bowl of Ebola. I can understand the discontent over the fear of journalistic corruption, but I have to raise an issue when women have to start fleeing their homes. Like Brianna Wu, who after minutes of having her personal details leaked on the chat forum 8chan, received texts like, I've got a K-bar and I'm going to come to your house and shove it up your ugly feminist cunt. I had to look up K-bar. I keep hearing and reading that people think that there isn't sexism in the gaming industry. Are there video games that are rife with sexism? Is that true? Do they promote a culture of misogyny and violence that must be dismantled? Well, my answer is no. Hmm, really? If that's the case, then why has Anita Sarkeesian been harassed nonstop for the past two years for speaking out on excessive harassment towards women? Well, because she's being a manipulative, sexist bastard who does nothing more than spit on gamers making them feel bad for playing these games, for trying to create games that are preferably to her fucking view, blames the fucking gamers, I mean not the gamers, the game developers, for not creating these games that fulfills her own fucking ego. It is not sexism, it's not racism, there's no ism in anything to hate someone that's being a complete and total fucking liar. Get the picture? There is no sexism towards Anita Sarkeesian. Yes, there's gonna be rape threats, there's always gonna be death threats towards Anita Sarkeesian. But guess what? This is common against celebrities and other YouTubers. Take a look at fucking Jack Thompson. He receives so much fucking hate. And yet somehow, Jack Thompson hasn't used his fucking gender or race or sexuality just to the form, just to create some sort of defense mechanism. Ugh. I can give Jack Thompson some credit. At least he can hold his own ground. But Anita Sarkeesian, as soon as she receives fucking criticism, the very first thing that she she's going to say is that people hate her because she has a fucking vagina and people like yourself are just, you know, clapping your hands and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you people? What? Anita is not the only one. <clears throat> There's a guy named Tom who drew art about Gamergate. How basically he pretty much just straw man Gamergate, turned the Gamergate mascot into nothing more than a stupid bimbo. 
and hasn't responded to criticism at all. In fact, he decided to disable his comments on his DeviantArt page because it was too much. And guess what? Jonathan Mann, the guy who created a song against Christina Hummers, Summers, I think that's her name, guess what? He received just as much hate as Anita Sarkeesian. But guess what? Because they're both men, they can't say, this is sexism. And I'm pretty goddamn sure you wouldn't be able to say the exact same thing. Whew. In the gaming industry. P.S. She speaks out from what seems to me a very well-researched, rational tone. As always, please keep in mind that it's entirely possible to be critical of some aspects of a piece of media while still finding other parts valuable or enjoyable. If you don't like what she's saying, why do you watch it? Jeez, I don't know. Maybe because the things that she says is utter bullshit and completely, highly offensive? I mean, the things that she says is completely stupid and completely misguiding. She's basically, quote unquote, teaching ch these, uh, the younger generation on how she views society, uh, how she views these video games. Her, this is her own opinion, yet... <coughs> She's teaching them to a fucking class with this fucking poison. This is not how video games fucking work. But I suppose with your logic, I guess maybe we should just shut the fuck up about the KKK and the LGB- I mean, not the LGBT- the WBC. Because, hey, they're just expressing their opinion, so why the fuck do we have to speak out against it? I mean, you're stupid. You're really stupid for saying that. If you fight what she's saying with actual harassment, you're kind of debunking your point. You're only proving that there is a toxicity within gaming that drives misogynistic hatred. I just don't understand why everyone can't play. The industry is changing. There is a cultural spasm taking place, and it could be awesome if everyone was just a little bit more open to change. <laughs> gaming industry and the gamers need to change just to benefit for your fucking egos. You're, you don't really care about women in video games. You just want video games to fit your own fucking agenda. That's it. That's the pre that's pretty much the fucking truth. <sighs> if you want to, you can raise a whole bunch of cash, you know, get together, you girls can masturbate with your vaginas, create a video game for yourselves so that way you can play it for yourselves, and rate it for yourselves. I wouldn't have a problem with that, but as soon as you invade our culture and demand change just to fit your ideology, then I just have to say, fuck you. Go to hell. Sure, it was a male-dominated world, but so what? Now women want to play too. How is that not a good thing? I don't know. I don't know how many women actually want to play Halo or Gears of War or Ratchet and Clank or Spiral of the Dragon or any game at that matter that that's basically full of violence. I mean, I know a bunch of women who prefer to play Candy Crush and Tetris, but how many women want to play Gears of War? Just asking. So what if women gamers want less prostitutes crying for their lives and more women who are willing to pull a sword out of their sheet to kick some fucking ass? Maybe I mean vagina sheath, maybe I don't. And uh, the fact that we can't kill a woman without having some form of impact to the story or how about we just can't kill women at all you know we can kill as many non-playable males but you know as soon as you kill a woman that's bad that is fucking bad you want to do that in real fucking life yeah and you don't want to make video games you know you don't want to take away our video games you just want to make video games to fit your agenda.
This doesn't take away from gaming, it adds to it. Just because it's new doesn't make it bad. You don't have to like everyone or what they do, but you also don't have to spend your days attacking them. You to say because we're the ones or who are playing the defensive. Not you, you're attacking us gamers. Is there anything else I can add? Sake Roar, that is my video response to you. So if you're going to make a video response, then at the very least, do me the favor and at least address the criticism directly rather than hop around the questions like a little bunny, okay? I am the atheist gamer and this is just the only, this is just the beginning of my series Straw Man and Gamergate. Peace the game out. If you enjoy watching this video, click on the like button. Subscribe to this channel for more videos and of course, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter and ugh, Google Plus. We all know Google Plus fucking sucks.